There's a really weird moment in this where Queen Elizabeth and her advisor are stood looking over her kingdom and you can't help but think how weird it is that these two historical British figures are both being played by former cast members from Neighbours. About as weird as the God of Thunder being a dude from home and away, admittedly. <laughs> You ever stop to look at how old Saoirse Ronan is in the context of how many awards noms she's racked up? Three, at 24 years old. And she doesn't even have a David O. Russell to act as her industry fluffer either. You remember what you were doing at 24? Probably nothing anywhere near as impressive. Personally, I saw the movie Sunshine that year. It was pretty good. But the deceptive inexperience of youth is kind of a factor with Mary Queen of Scots, though admittedly not quite as prominent as the deceptive inexperience of gender. Ronan's Mary, Margot Robbie's Queen Elizabeth, and our story takes place over two decades, beginning with Mary's return to her homeland in the wake of her French husband's passing, uh, to assume her place on the Scottish throne. The men of Scotland are a little less than pleased about this, as indeed are the men of Elizabeth's court too, who advise her at every turn to play politics and put the incoming royal in her comparatively lower place. And so, two of the most powerful women in the world, who also happen to be cousins, find themselves at the mercy of heritage and tradition, with their own dreams and desires attacked not only by outside forces, but some from within, too. Obviously, if you're going to tell this story in 2019, there's something of a golden opportunity to tackle it from a more contemporary viewpoint as regards the gender politics of it all. And that really does appear to be the driving force behind the film. Sure, it makes her a decently passable character study of Mary and even shows off a nice bit of vulnerability for Elizabeth, but it's the story of a woman's standing, even a queen's, that makes the potential of Mary Queen of Scots absolutely irresistible to this day and age. I mean, there's always been a need, but has there ever been a more zeitgeisty time to talk about the second class treatment of women, like even ones in positions of absolute authority? So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty heavily contemporary on that front. If you know your history, there's, there's obviously a pretty specific execution that kind of has to bookend this story, and once that's out of the way at the beginning, yeah, it's, uh, it's straight in with the feminist angle. Rather than the powerful woman v powerful woman grudge match that marketing promises you though, what you actually get with Mary Queen of Scots is something a lot more nuanced and thoughtful, even if it does occasionally descend into some pretty boilerplate period melodrama at times. Saoirse Ronan's terrific as ever, just so much talent like bottled up behind those sparkly blue eyes, talent that she just knows exactly how much to filter around any given scene to outright own it, but without necessarily stealing the show from those that she's actually sharing it with. Yet again, it seems there's just not an accent on the planet she can't do, and the gravitas she brings to the part sits it pretty proudly alongside the kind of intricate, invested work she's made her bones on to date. Margot Robbie's pretty solid gold here too, I mean it's the best performance I have ever seen her deliver and for the first time I might actually be sold on this idea that she really could be a proper name on the poster movie star one of these days. Maybe when she's done playing the fetish cheerleader for morons, I mean who can tell. I think they missed a trick here not utilising the production for this as an opportunity to seek out your platform to other emerging female talent behind the line, but it does afford Josie Rourke the chance to make her feature debut and it's a pretty damn good one too. With a lot of the environments lending themselves to a rather sort of towering, easily accessible sense of atmosphere, there's, there's really only Gladiator DP John Matheson's touches to be added before Rourke can really go all in, and when she does, she really does. Uh, believe me, Mary Queen of Scots is just as grisly as regards physical violence as it is the, the delicate politics of its day. I mean, the favourite might have cornered an early lead on monarchal bat-biting, but this is the kick-the-dudes-in-the-balls alternative that'll easily work better to a mainstream crowd. There's a robust supporting cast in there, nearly entirely male, amusingly, but it includes the likes of Joe Alwyn, who's also from The Favourite, but he's actually more memorable here. He makes an impression. Even if I do always seem to find myself thinking he's Luke Bracey for the first few minutes whenever he pops up in something. David Tennant, meanwhile, remains this strangely underutilised asset in a small role that's just full of seething hatred. Seriously, when are we just going to give this guy a Rasputin biopic and have done with it already? I mean, the dude's been silently screaming out for that since Jessica Jones. I mean, give the people what they want. And Jack Loudon from the Morrissey biopic England is Mine, he's about as close as this comes to a male lead, really, and he's really good too. Bit swarthy, bit of a strapping lad, but with a twist that'll have you wishing he chanted for the watch, because, you know, you will be. Hilariously Loudon also seems to get more ginger the longer he spends it in Scotland. I mean, that's not in any way relevant, it's just amusing. They can't topple their female stars, though, as both just seem to shine brighter and brighter on Rourke's watch here. 
She's got some excellent tricks of her sleeve to repel them even higher though too. Like some pretty slick contrasting parallel shots of the two queens and just a whole bevy of really inventive visuals. For all of its contemporary hand wringing too, the script is very tight, very streamlined and doesn't waste a second of the runtime afforded it. It's a little bit anticlimactic, maybe, that the only time Ronan and Robbie actually share the screen is for a single scene 20 minutes before the end, I'll admit, but that's really the marketing's fault more than anything else, and besides, I mean, who are we to argue with history, right? It's not without its little glaring flaws in that script, though. It's, it's one of those period pieces like Colette recently that seems to pick and choose its period-specific attitude to LGBT content based more or less entirely on what the plot calls for at that particular moment, and it's also not overly brilliant about conveying the passage of time too much. You do get a little bit of a feel for the clock running thanks to Margot Robbie's Queen Elizabeth makeup, you know, the, the powder white face, etc. But otherwise, Mary still seems to be like Saoirse Ronan's age by the time history has to happen two decades after we meet her. It's annoying in a sense. I mean, I really like Mary Queen of Scots on the whole, but it's a little frustrating that it shows a set of people looking the same from one consecutive scene to the next, only for one of them to then just casually mention how it's been ten years or something. Bad form. A hell of a lot otherwise does work though, and Josie Rourke's delivered quite a little belter here. Uh, it's got a great score from Max Richter too. He scored a Ewan McGregor movie I really liked a few years back called Perfect Sense, and uh, he just adds real texture proceedings in this one. Great musician. Between him, Rourke, and Matheson, I mean, combined with some stellar production design from James Merrifield and some really terrific makeup effects, this one's pretty mint. Four stars for me. There is just so much to drink in and appreciate. It's it's suspenseful. It's engaging. For Margot Robbie, it's a career best. For for Saoirse Ronan, it's a day ending in Y, so she's wonderful at the very least. Just do not miss this. Hey, remember Crash? Not the really good David Cronenberg one, but the other one that won Best Picture? Well, Monsters and Men is basically that movie if it were actually good. It's the first movie from Ronaldo Marcus Green, and it's a really compelling ensemble drama that explores how three black men's lives are affected in the wake of the, uh, the officer-involved shooting of another black man that one of them witnesses. You might have caught the poster in passing. It has uh, John David Washington on it in full NYPD gear, and uh, you know what? Washington's pretty great in it. He's great anyway. Most of us have seen Black Klansman at this point, so we kind of know, but it's a sturdy keep at that sort of level on the performance front. I was blown away by Anthony Ramos, though. He plays the young bystander who witnesses and, and films the shooting early on. Uh, terrific role, just brought to life with an amazing performance. It's, it's got a very raw, very authentic quality to it. I was a big fan. Apparently, he was in A Star Is Born, but I'm going to be honest, all I remember of that at this stage are kind of the lyrics to Shallow and the taste of my own tears, so I'm a little fuzzy, forgive me, but there will be a rewatch pre-Oscars, don't worry. Finally, there's Kelvin Harrison Jr. filling out the lead trio, and while his is easily the more soulful millennial of the three leads, he pulls it off well in a way that keeps it grounded, keeps it focused, and never feels too pandering in a way that writing for characters like that can so easily become. The three storylines themselves, which unfurl linearly and are relatively self-contained, it's, it's not like Crash in that way, thankfully. Uh, they're all sharp, insightful, they make for great mediations on that relationship between black men in America and the police, police brutality and racial profiling, things like that. Uh, there's a really terrific opening scene that literally consists of nothing more than, than Washington's face as an off-duty cop as he gets pulled over by a white officer. Things like this are played as stark clinical events that simply exist as facts of life. They're, they're not sensationalized, they're, they're not injected with melodrama, and they're not pushed even an inch closer to being less credible or believable. It's just a very matter-of-fact film in how it lays its drama out. It's very direct and, and almost trembling in the way that it does it. Harrison's closing chapter of the film feels a little bit unearned in comparison to the first two, but being the guy to follow Anthony Ramos and then John David Washington is a pretty unenviable task for anyone. I mean, the actor and the story do pretty well, though. And insofar as being that story about the connection between race, racial profile, and police brutality, Monsters and Men is every bit the movie Crash was falsely held up as being 15 years ago. It's three stars from me for not quite sticking the landing in the third act, but like Josie Rourke on Mary Queen of Scots, Ronaldo Green's got himself a hell of a debut here, and you absolutely have to catch it. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, rate, and review.